before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button, then turn that notification button on right now. Every year, the post-WrestleMania season gives us an unappreciated gift. New call-ups from the NXT roster? This has been an integral part to the post-WrestleMania Raw and SmackDown hype, and everyone looks forward to it. This year, we saw call-ups ranging from former NXT champion Drew McIntyre to No Way Jose. People are already pegging them for success and failure, but there are little things that we don't know about them. My name is John, and here are 10 little-known facts about the recent NXT call-ups. One of the newest wrestling promotions today is Defiant Wrestling, formerly known as What Culture Pro Wrestling. They started shows in 2016 and their first ever champion was Killian Dane, then known as Big Damo. He beat Rampage to win the title but lost it soon enough to another WWE wrestler, Joseph Connors. Dane left the promotion after signing with the WWE, wrestling last at True Legacy and losing to Martin Kirby. This would be Damo's final appearance for the company where he would show his respect to Kirby and announced that he would be heading to Florida. Two of Jose's childhood idols were also the biggest wrestlers to ever enter the ring. They were Stone Cold Steve Austin and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Along with them, Jose said, Valenzuela people in my family and from my generation went back and watched people from the island like Jack Venino. He's there and he's one of the heroes, the hero of DR. It's cool trying to get in there and get lost in the world that is wrestling. I wanted to be part of that and here I am. He also cited Carlos Colon as a major inspiration. He went on to say, It's cool to get into this form of what I grew up watching, but now I'm representing a country. You have to go back and actually see everything that's going on in there. It's cool to see the support and love I'm getting representing the Dominican Republic. Valenzuela said during an interview before NXT TakeOver's event in San Antonio, he would go on to say, I'm out here trying to represent the Latinos as a whole, you know, and have fun doing it. Valenzuela said that his first experience in the wrestling world in the independent scene, when he debuted in 2013 with CFW Mid-Atlantic as Manny Garcia, he would spend two years there before getting noticed by WWE. And he signed a developmental deal in NXT, in which he wrestled under his real name for a good part of 2015 before being repackaged as No Way Jose. The leader of Sanity debuted all the way back in 2002 on WWE Velocity with tag team partner Bobby Roode to face off against Chuck Palumbo and Johnny Stamboli, the full-blooded Italians. He also wrestled Sean O'Hare on Velocity and Val Venus on Heat before eventually leaving the WWE. He's a part of a chain of other wrestlers like AJ Styles, Kenny Omega, Daniel Bryan, Samoa Joe, and Dean Ambrose to have left the WWE despite these initial opportunities to wrestle for the company. They all went to the indies, made themselves big stars, and came back as protected and important stars. Andrade Cien Almas was one of the biggest stars back in his home country of Mexico. However, he came very close to quitting the WWE in favor of a return to Mexico. He was talked out of doing so by none other than the former WWE star Alberto Del Rio. I talked to my good friend Manny, a poor guy, he wants to come back. Unfortunately, when you go into the company that you have to abide by their rules. That's just how it is, El Patron said. It's the nature of our business, I always like to put it like this. There's a problem with all the talent that goes there. It's the inability to speak the language. They have the talent, but when you go to work for a company like this, you have to say, I say this. Something my great mentor Dean Malenko would tell me. Everything you know, forget it. Delete the tape. You are starting from nothing. Use one of your moves or things that will help you get over, but forget about Lucha Libre. Lucha Libre will not work here. You will never be anything if you focus and stick to being a luchador in WWE. These words from Alberto made Alma stay with the WWE, and we now know that was a fantastic decision. Ember Moon is one of the best female wrestlers in the WWE right now. She has been called up from NXT and looks destined to be one of the biggest stars on the main roster. However, she had a very interesting route to WWE. Ember Moon came to NXT with a body of work from Shimmer and other independent promotions. However, years before that, Ember Moon failed three WWE tryouts. The first was in 2007 when she was just 19 years old at the Florida Championship Wrestling Facility. 
The second came in 2008, and her final came in mid-2009. After her third rejection, Moon decided that she was going to make a name for herself on the indies and force them to accept her. And accept her, they eventually did. Drew McIntyre was one of the biggest names for Scottish promotion in Sane Championship Wrestling. He is a two-time ICW World Heavyweight Champ and has won multiple year-end awards such as Best Feud, Best on the Mic. For his connection to ICW, McIntyre was inducted into the ICW Hall of Fame in 2018. WWE does not allow their contracted wrestlers to attend and endorse non-WWE events as everyone knows that WWE is very strict with this policy. However, Drew McIntyre attended his induction. When asked about the induction, he revealed that it was Triple H that gave McIntyre his blessing for this. After they actually sent it, I contacted Triple H and told him about it and he personally endorsed me going. The reason I'm going is because Triple H believes in ICW and was very happy for me. Receiving this opportunity, he told me, you should go there and be there in person. That's the reason I'm going to be there. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce may portray a heel team and have a cool and cutting edge to them, however that always wasn't the case. When they first moved stateside, both of them slept on Bailey's floor as she revealed on Twitter. When these two got signed and moved to America, they were sleeping on my apartment floor in Orlando, said Bailey. So proud to see how far they've come, they sacrificed so much to have their moment tonight. Way to expose the business, Bailey. Both members of the Authors of Pain have mastered different sports before joining the WWE. Razor was a mixed martial artist and held a professional record of 6 wins and 2 losses. His final MMA fight was a second round TKO loss at Bellator 130 in 2014. He also holds an impressive 18 second submission over Ollie Thompson. He was a submission specialist, winning 4 of his matches via submission. Akum was an amateur wrestler before returning to pro wrestling. He was the Canadian National Freestyle Wrestling Champion for three years running from 2011 to 2013 in the heavyweight division. He won a gold medal in the 115 kilo category at the 2009 Canadian Summer Games and a silver medal at the 2011 Pan American Games. His amateur wrestling career ended after Gerald Briscoe scouted him for the WWE back in 2014. Eric Young is known to be a man who can play multiple characters, such as a brooding leader for a heel faction or even a comedic face. Another character he has played is of host of Animal Planet Off the Hook Extreme Catches in July 2012. The show ran for two seasons and was around the premise that Young will go out and fish with unusual fishermen for unusual fish. The show followed a pun-style episode naming concept with some particularly memorable ones being Sailfish Smackdown, Sharkamania, Eric and Goliath, and the absolute genius one, oh la la. Its reruns can be caught on the Discovery Channel. Andrade Almas is of the third generation in his family to compete in Lucha Libre. His grandfather, Jose Andrade, wrestled under the ring name El Moro. His father worked as Briante, and his uncles wrestled under the names Diamante and Moro III. Zafiro, which his real name is not revealed, Kevin, who is otherwise known as Juan Andrade, Espanto Jr. or Pentagon, also known as Jesus Andrade, Espiritu Magico, Juan Andrade, and one of his cousins works as the current Espanto Jr., real name unrevealed. He chose the name Sombra and was a masked luchador until September 18th of 2015, when he lost a mask versus mask match against Atlantis at CMLL 82. Up until then, his record was five consecutive wins, retaining the right to wear his mask. He has stayed true to the unmasking and has been wrestling unmasked his entire WWE career. And these were little known facts about the recent NXT call-ups. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching Wrestling Hub and I will see you later with more wrestling videos.